and welcome to this short video that we hope will get you acquainted with your new pool table. In this video, we'll show you how to access various components on the table, a look at how they work and what does what, as well as some basic maintenance for the most common problems that you may encounter during operation. Before we get started properly, here's a quick introduction to the table that we'll be using to demonstrate. This is the 7 foot Supreme Prince. Everything in this video also applies for coin mech enabled Supreme Winner. Everything on the prints is identical in how it works, where various components can be found, and how you access various parts of the table. We will also highlight some important points that you need to keep in mind for safe and efficient maintenance of the table. With all that in mind, let's begin. During any game, all potted object balls will be delivered to this ball return tray on the side of the table. This whole system can be removed for easy maintenance, giving you unrestricted access to the ball return tray and coin mechanism. Removing this unit will also allow access to other parts of the table, including the top rail release latches, which we will cover later. To remove the ball return tray, all you need to do is insert the two keys into the two locks, and then turn each of them clockwise to release the assembly. Do make sure that you keep these keys in a safe place, as both of them do need to be in the locks at the same time to completely unlock the unit. After unlocking, all you need to do is pull the whole unit out, and sure enough, the ball return tray is free. Whilst it's out, let's have a look at the whole mechanism and see how it works. The balls in the tray are released when a coin is inserted, and then pressed into the Essex Straight 6 coin mechanism. This mechanism is extremely robust, so shouldn't give you any problems, but do give us a call if you have any issues. Pushing the coin in will leave the ball release mechanism open, allowing all the balls in the tray to be released and then delivered to the ball delivery hole at the end of the table. There's even a counter installed on the top of the mechanism that allows you to see just how many games have been played. The cue ball is slightly different to the object balls and won't be delivered to this tray. Being a little smaller, the cue ball will feed out of the tray instead of going into it as demonstrated here. It will then travel down this passage on the left before being delivered to its own ball return. Let's quickly show you where coins end up after being pressed into the coin mech. After being pushed in, the coin mech will deliver the coins to this chute, and then eventually this coin box underneath the table. The coin box is held in place with this locking pin on the upper side, which keeps the coin box in place until it's removed. Take this pin out and the coin box can easily be slid out. The coin box can be further secured with an additional padlock. A padlock prevents anyone but the key holder from removing the coin box, adding another level of security. When replacing the coin box, don't forget to lock it in place with the locking pin. Nine times out of ten, the problem that you're most likely to encounter when operating your pool table are blockages. These are typically caused by foreign objects being dropped or forced down the pockets. It can happen, and it's annoying when it does, but thankfully blockages can be rectified fairly easily by removing the slate. Let's see how. Removing the slate will grant you access to every pocket channel as well as the central ball return channel. This is ideal for clearing obstructions. It also allows you to level the table a lot easier. The slate is held in place with the top rail, so let's release that first. The top rail is held down with six releasable latches in various spots around the table. Four along the length of the ball return tray side, and then one at each end of the table. To release the latch at the ball delivery end, simply reach through the ball delivery hole and up to reach the latch. At the cue ball return end, access the latch through this hole in the bottom of the table. The last four side latches can all be accessed from the opening in the side. Once all six latches are undone, the top rail can then be hinged up, giving you access to the slate. Extreme care must be taken when handling the slate due to its size and weight, but we'll highlight these as we go along. Removing the slate is a two-person job, possibly more if you need it. The slate is not only very heavy, being over 100 kilos in weight, but is also very fragile, and will likely crack or split if it's dropped, so it's strongly recommended to have one or more people at each end of the table to lift. When lifting the slate, do not lift it from the sides. 
doing so creates a risk of trapping and crushing your fingers between the slate and the supporting frame. Instead, lift the slate using the corner pocket cutouts, using the pocket channels as a space to get your hands underneath. Very carefully, lift the slate out of the way, then place it cloth side out against the table or a wall. Try and place it as safely vertical as you can to reduce the risk of the slate sliding down. Don't lie the slate flat on the ground either, as this will make it extremely difficult to pick the slate up again afterwards. With the slate out of the way, you have full access to the ball return channel, allowing you to completely clear the channel of any obstructions. The table can also be easily levelled this way. It's a simple matter of lifting two legs from the ground and then screwing or unscrewing the feet until the desired levelling is achieved. We're lifting the table by hand here, but we recommend using a pull table trolley to make the process easier. These are available from us on our website. If you're operating the table as part of our revenue sharing scheme, we will supply one of these for you. A pull table trolley will take care of all the heavy lifting, making levelling much easier. When you're done, carefully replace the slate back onto the supporting frame, using these guides to ensure that the slate is back in position correctly, then simply repeat the process in reverse. Lower the top frame, redo the latches, then slide the ball return tray back into the side of the table, then lock and remove the keys. With this, the table is ready to go again. This covers all the basic features and maintenance aspects for your table. If you have any other questions, then please don't hesitate to contact us. Give us a call in the office and we will be happy to help you out with anything that you may need.